It's not good morning anymore. Good afternoon. I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate so deeply what I experienced yesterday in Mr. Khan's school and what we just witnessed today, which is a tremendous outpouring of very rich thinking about students and that it's really the students who are the center of our attention. Um, I just want to say also that I had a delightful, uh, by the way, anybody thinking of lunch right now? <laughs> Actually, I'd like you to think about your stomach for just a minute. Um, because last night I had a delightful opportunity to um, have dinner with the head teachers. And we actually, we were accused of being quite raucous, uh, quite loud. Um, and I think it was because on our table, we had um, this uh, uh, moving tray. It's like, a, I guess it's a Chinese buffet tray. And- uh, The dough. Huh? What, what is it the called? Dough. Yeah, the dough. So uh, it was really, it was very interesting. We're, we're around this and we keep moving it around and it's segmented into, I think, five or six sections, and each delicious type of food was laid out there. And just that, sitting around the table and eating, and by the way, I, I quite understand now why I'm coming back to Malaysia for the food, but it's also how we sit together and how we really sit around this table and it's moving and we're taking different bits of food. As a matter of fact, one of the uh, head teachers, when we got to the fruit dish, was holding up different pieces of fruit and saying, oh, we can compare these. <laughs> so I know, I know that uh, as the head teachers, you have embodied this work. And I've been asked to talk about and, and reflect a little bit about collaborative leadership, but uh, it's being evidenced uh, today and by our speakers, our fellow panelists, how important collaboration is. Whether it's around a table where we're eating or where students are sitting around a table sharing their best thinking. And, and that's really uh, why I'm, I'm uh, stealing away one of the slides uh, from one of the schools because many of the things that I'm going to just touch base on for a few minutes relate very much to what is on this slide. The role of teachers as facilitators, the role of teachers as being more creative in, in planning what they're doing, creating a livelier atmosphere in the classroom, really sharing constructively the ideas that they have with each other and, and planning that into the lesson and then also saving time by summarizing. Now, I would like to take, if you will, just take the word teacher out of there and put leadership or put student or again put teacher or parent and say, I would suggest, that we want all of these things in our collaborative classrooms. Now, what's interesting, I just want to go back to uh, dinner last night. Uh, what's very interesting is that with the food before us, we can see it all, correct? We can see all the food. It's much more difficult to see each other's thinking, isn't it? And the, one of the central points I would love to convey, if, if I can get this through in the next few minutes, is the idea of how difficult it is for us to communicate with each other. Especially in leadership roles where we each carry so much um, depth of responsibility about our roles. It's very difficult to communicate ideas. Why is that? Why is it so hard for us to often communicate ideas clearly? I think, well, I think I'll use that as a starting point. I think it's because in our minds and in our brains, we 
we have so many ideas going on, don't we? I mean, take a moment right now and just think about what's going on in your mind other than having lunch. All of the different ideas that have been generated today, how do we hold all of those ideas together? It's very, very difficult. Now the question becomes, if somebody, if, you, if I asked you to turn to somebody uh, right next to you and say, well, ask the question, what did you learn from this morning? Where would you start? There's so many ideas going on. When we ask students, what do you think? They oftentimes are blank because so many ideas are going on in their head. And when they're asked to verbalize their thinking, when they're asked to speak, all of those ideas are linear, right? Because I'm putting words together in sequence. But the ideas are much richer and they have greater association. So just the task of trying to express what's going on in our mind and in our brains, this great rich network, is very difficult when we're asked to speak directly. And that's really where fundamental thinking processes represented visually support us in conveying ideas, the richness of our ideas. Um, by the way, our and this relates really to this idea of communication and collaborative leadership. Um, our, consider our ideas linear. Are most of our ideas linear? What's going on in your head right now? No. Is, um, is love linear? Is our spiritual life linear? Is, is the uh, solar system linear? No. Are our bodies linear? No. There, there's all of our ecosystems, are our buildings, anything around us are really these rich networks of ideas. And so it's extremely difficult for students and for teachers and us as leaders to express what are very complex ideas um, in a linear way. And, and this is where the thinking maps, I think, lead to helping us express ideas and communicate as leaders, as teachers, as students. Now, let me just step back because um, where I started with this, uh, with the thinking maps, was really about the student. And I wanted to comment, somebody was saying, what about those, the, the students who are low performing? I started teaching uh, in Oakland, California, and when I stepped into that classroom, my students, 70% of them were in the lowest quartile performance. These were some of the most underachieving students in the whole San Francisco Bay Area, and it was in Oakland, California. But I started using visual, different kinds of visual tools, and all of a sudden they just blossomed. Their ideas started to spread and I could actually see their thinking. And then, and um, Mr. Razindra, uh, the professor, you were talking, we were talking about Art Costa, uh, one of the leaders in the field of thinking. He came into my classroom one day and, and saw me, I was a very young teacher, he saw me teaching, and, he, and we started talking, I started going to his workshops, and his, his work at that point in the early 1980s was on this, this topic of collaborative leadership. Because he developed a, a way of coaching and mentoring as leaders. And that's really where I want to um, step into the implications for the thinking maps for collaborative leadership. Because it's very difficult for us to coach um, some, some of the head teachers were uh, saying that coaching was going to be very important. Mentoring was going to be very important. Well, consider that the thinking maps can be used in our meetings as teachers and leaders to communicate our best thinking as adults. And we actually moved about 10 years ago our work with thinking maps stayed focused on the student, stayed focused on the teacher, 
But then, and Larry Alper was just mentioned, Larry Alper and I began to look at what it meant for leaders to use the maps for collaborative leadership. What would it look like across a whole school where it wasn't just the students using the maps, not just the teachers using the maps, but all of us using the maps along with some other approaches to facilitate thinking. And what I'd like to share with you are the results of our research uh, that very much reflect this uh, partial multi-flow, very much reflected. We identified across all the schools that we looked at, and it was, a, again, a qualitative study with some quantitative backup, we identified five fundamental outcomes when schools use the thinking maps for collaborative leadership. And I actually believe that these are the skill sets that are required in the 21st century. First off, the most important outcome from all of these schools was clarity. Clarity of communication. But there's something added here. It wasn't just like I can uh, you know, convey my ideas a little bit better. It's that the head teachers and the lead teachers in the school conveyed that they could clearly express complex ideas. So it wasn't just uh, my saying to Richard something, uh, and he says, oh, I understand what you say. It's that I can actually create a map and I can clearly express a very complex thought. And so it isn't just sort of, can we speak more clearly? Can we write more clearly? But can we think and convey our ideas in a much more clear way? So clarity was very important. The second uh, outcome was reported by head, head teachers and lead teachers was efficiency. Now oftentimes we think about efficiency as like getting something done quickly. This really wasn't the case. This, their description was, yes, we save time. By the way, down at the bottom on, on the multi-flow map there that was conveyed uh, from the school is the idea of saving time. So there is some saving time, absolutely. But what was conveyed is that there was an efficiency in getting to the depth of thinking. Do you notice oftentimes we're in a conversation and we sort of go around an idea and we, we stand a little bit to the left and a little to the right, we talk about the idea, and then it might take us a very long time to get to the core idea that comes out. And so what we found is that it wasn't just clarity, it was efficiency in, in uh, head teachers and uh, the teaching faculty to get to depth and quality of thing. The third, which was really brought up today in a lot of the, uh, in, in the dialogue and the conversations, is the idea of collaboration. So the third outcome was collaboration. Now, um, most of the time you might just think that, oh, it's more lively dialogue, more uh, in engagement, but what the participants in the study showed is that they felt that they were having collaboration at a deep level of dialogue. That people were really listening to them because they could show their thinking quite visually. And that there was a respectfulness about the richness of the ideas. So it's collaboration not in the sense of just being more lively and engaged, but actually uh, moving forward at, at a different uh, level of depth. The fourth outcome from this research was this, uh, this word that was, has been really big in the United States for many, many years, uh, and now it's almost becoming a cliche, but the word is empowerment. Uh, and it's so interesting to think about the idea of empowering others or in really supporting people becoming more empowered. By the way, uh, what was really recognized this morning is that students are feeling more empowered, correct? They're feeling like they have that engagement. And what's actually going on, I believe, is that they realize 
that though the teacher has power, they've been invited to express their ideas openly. This is very much what we found in the area of uh, collaborative leadership, is that what happens is, is that faculty members, along with drive teams, along with the head teacher, are actually speaking not from positions of power, but from the position of ideas. That it isn't just about, we need you to do this, or I can do this, or feeling stronger about the ideas. It's that it becomes more of a leveling in the organization, where people are truly engaged uh, in a deep respect for each other's idea and thus feel uh, more empowered. By the way, what we find with students in the first phase of the implementation of Thinking Maps is an immediate sense of self-efficacy, of self-esteem, growth in self-esteem about themselves as a learner and themselves as a thinker. So that's the fourth, which is empowerment. And then the fifth, and uh, we had some side conversations here as, as we were listening, about the whole idea of how do we sustain, how do we sustain this effort and implementation? And that is probably the more difficult of the areas of collaborative leadership. I think may come in, but I know in the back of your mind you're saying, will this be sustained over time? How will it be sustained in my school? What can I do? And what we found when the thinking maps um, became part of the school culture is that it doesn't leave. That the thinking maps, when really developed, becomes a common visual language for the, everybody within the learning community to sustain their ideas. It actually develops uh, in schools institutional, it's an institutional language. It becomes the part of the air that we breathe. But it, it isn't just that the maps are used in a routine way. I think that the idea that, that the maps are sustained and they're used for collaborative leadership because they're highly adaptive. I mean, one of the, um, I noticed out on the banner for this, um, for the I Think project, the idea is about adaptable thinking. In the first phase of bringing thinking maps to students, to teachers, and in collaborative leadership, what we often find is the participants learning the basic language of the maps. And after that, a little bit of routine gets developed, then high degrees of flexibility happen so that students are using multiple maps together. They're thinking about their thinking. They're reflective on what kind of thinking they're using, and they're going to the map that helps them. So this idea of uh, collaborative leadership really comes from each of us as students. We, if we remain as students, as learners, as leaders in our school, and we're adaptable with the maps, then we're going to be in a very different place uh, over the long term. So these five areas, clarity, but clarity in the sense of being able to express complex ideas, efficiency in being able to go deep with the ideas more quickly, Collaboration, meaning that there's true dialogue where positions of power get shifted a little bit so people are expressing their ideas rather than their power. Empowerment, meaning that we truly feel uh, an empathy for others. A frame of reference that says, I see what you mean and from that comes a self-esteem and a sense of new power within each of us. And then sustainability, that idea that this is a language across the whole school. So these five points of research, uh, we, just, we just published a book recently called Develop, Developing Connective Leadership. Uh, and I'm gonna try to make available as much of that to uh, head teachers and MOE as possible. 
really found that these five outcomes were crucial. And I want to go back to this uh, multi-flow map and, and have us think about what is happening on a teacher and student level. There's greater collaboration and facilitation. There's more openness and creativity and, and a, a sense of um, real flexibility and clarity. There's a livelier atmosphere, that level of collaboration, constructing ideas with each other, meaning that there's a sense of empowerment in the group, and that idea of efficiency and saving time are, are really key. So all of this together, though, leads to the idea of rethinking what schools are really about in the 21st century. And uh, Mark Rosario, this morning, we started with the idea of globalization. If you think about it, we're now in this global society. We're connected by something called the internet, on the web, and we're now really reaching out across cultures and across languages. So in fact, one of the common bonds that bring us together as human beings is our capacity to think and our capacity to have an understanding of somebody else's thinking. And to me, if that is the, um, that's the real goal, we can talk about cognitive development, we can talk about developing higher order thinking, which we really see when the maps are being brought in. We can talk about collaborative leadership, but if we don't, I believe, if we don't go to that place of uh, humanity, what is it about us as human beings that bring us together, then I don't think we're in the right place in rethinking what schools are about. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it with that because I know that we're running late, but I wanna, um, again, thank everybody I really wish I could respond and, and engage with all the different ideas from the qualitative research to the idea of a professional learning community as being the vision, which is absolutely um, congruent with my thinking and our thinking. It's, it's how do you develop that culture of, of change in the school that uh, head teachers have expressed. And then I also want to just say that your, the opening remarks um, that came together around the idea of Howard Gardner's work is that there really is a multiplicity of intelligences uh, in each one of us. And there, it isn't just the linguistic intelligence or the mathematical, it's really also the capacity to convey our ideas deeply and collaborate. So I want to thank you again from the bottom of my heart. And I know that at some point our, our stomachs will also be full. And I do want to have you remember this image of, and I will always remember it, uh, with the 10 head teachers and myself around that beautiful tray of food and how we could swing the tray around and help each other in collaboration. And if that's the vision we have for our schools, then I think we will eat well and we will think well. So thank you very much.